Hello, welcome to another International Relations Capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today we are discussing the formation of a Taliban cabinet in Afghanistan. That seems to be the hottest subject being discussed everywhere today. Because the composition of the Taliban cabinet disappointed everyone. They had given signals that this is going to be a new Taliban, Taliban 2.0, rather than the old Taliban, which is known as Taliban 1.0. So the expectation was that since 20 years had passed, since the last Taliban government was ousted, and the world had changed and Afghanistan had changed also, and therefore, the Taliban, which has now taken over, will be somewhat different from the Taliban of 20 years ago. That was the expectation. And they gave reason for people to believe this. Because first of all, it took a long time, even though they could easily occupy the presidential palace and take control over the whole country, except for Panjshir Valley. They could have immediately appointed this cabinet at that time. But they gave hope to the world that this would be different. They were looking for more moderate leadership. They were also looking for an all-inclusive cabinet, taking not just the Pashtuns, but others also. And people who had even held interim offices like uh, uh, Abdullah, Abdullah, and Karzai, and so on. So such expectations were there. But then this. When it prolonged, one knew that uh, things were not doing going so well. And there were even reports that there was a clash among them. And there was even a report that uh, Mr. Um, you know, Baradari, Baradar was uh, even uh, the now present uh, uh, Deputy uh, Prime Minister uh, was, was even uh, hurt uh, in, a, in a clash. You know, this is, may not be true. But then everything was settled suddenly when the ISI chief, that is the Pakistan, Pakistan's uh, spy chief, arrived in Kabul and uh, gave personal directive to quell the rebellion in uh, Panjshir. And very quickly, they were able to take over Panjshir also. And soon after that, this new cabinet was uh, announced. Uh, once that we knew that this was not a new, uh, a new moderate uh, government, the names were not surprising because all these are all the old names we already knew. So the supreme leader is uh, Mullah Hassan Akund. No, sorry. Uh, supreme leader is Mullah Hibatullah. Akhmud Sada, who is the supreme leader, he would be the final authority. Is like something like the Ayatollahs in uh, Iran. In fact, there is slight uh, similarity between the uh, the Taliban government and uh, the Iran structure. So there is a supreme leader, and um, uh, uh, Akhmud Sada, and um, then below that. There is a prime minister. There was general expectation that it would be Mr. Baradar, who is uh, considered to be a moderate person. But instead, they have Mullah Hassan Akund, who is the prime minister. And um, Mr. Mullah Abdul, Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar has become the deputy prime minister. He was the one who was very active in the Doha discussions. And he is the one who had given some signals to India that uh, Taliban government would like to be to work with India and cooperate, etc. But he did not prevail, and so he has become deputy prime minister and not the uh, prime minister. Uh, but the most disturbing thing, of course, is that the appointment of Sirajuddin Haqqani as the interior minister. He, of course, is the leader of the what is called the Haqqani network, which is simply. Uh, Pakistani outfit supported by the ISI. 
that is Pakistani Intelligence Service. And Haqqani Network is one of the most uh, feared and uh, considered to be the most fundamentalist and terrorist organization in the pay of, the, of Pakistan. Then there is uh, Mullah Muhammad Yaqub, who is the defense minister. And the foreign minister is uh, Amok Khan Mutaki, the foreign minister, all known figures. They were in different positions in the previous uh, uh, Taliban government. And therefore, what they are indicating is that it is continuity rather than change. And uh, the most disturbing part of this whole exercise is that it is completely Pakistan dominated. The whole cabinet seems to have been put together by the ISI uh, to make sure that the Taliban government is not different from the previous one. It will be a fundamentalist government. And um, some of the factors are very disturbing. There are 33 ministers, out of which 30 are Pashtuns, uh, the main uh, group. And uh, all others, other groups, have been ignored. So, so 30 out of 33 Pashtuns means it is still a Pashtun government and not, not an Afghan government as yet. So, the, it became very clear that uh, this government is going to be heavily uh, dependent on Pakistan. And this is the bad news that has uh, come, particularly for India, because any expectation that we would have a, a new dispensation uh, in Taliban with whom, with whom we could work has been belied. So, and this is the impression that others have. Of course, many others have different relationship with Pakistan. But as far as we are concerned, this is of a, uh, an important uh, development. Uh, so the Sakani linkage is also with Al-Qaeda leadership. And um, Pakistan ISI, and he was also involved in, uh, in several attacks against Indians, particularly the Indian embassy in uh, 2008. And uh, he has a, a reward for those. In the, in the U.S. State Department has announced a reward of $10 million if um, somebody helps to catch him or kill him. So, and this is true of several of the cabinet ministers. There are some of them are declared UN terrorists. Others are declared terrorists by others. Many people are being, are, have a price on their heads who can be punished, caught, killed, etc. So it's a very, very dangerous situation which has developed. So the general impression is that uh, this is not going to change very much uh, because um, though they are saying that this is an interim government, since the composition is entirely of one character, then it cannot be much change cannot happen. And this is sad because they needed, we thought that they needed recognition from the international community. And more than that, humanitarian assistance because Afghanistan is slipping into anarchy, uh, poverty, and even starvation. So the humanitarian effort of the international community is very much required. And uh, in spite of that, they have taken this decision. That is, that's because they are fundamentalist, Islamist, profoundly anti-modern and uh, committed to jihad. So they are establishing a, uh, an anti-modern medieval kind of government is what uh, uh, they are looking for. Uh, we had thought that there was, they, they'll be pushed to uh, some kind of a, a moderate approach, but uh, there is no sign of that. Uh, but there are some countries who believe that they can do, they can work with them. China is one of them, Russia and uh, Iran and Pakistan. So these are the countries which have already more or less recognized the government by keeping their embassies there. And even um, American, US government, as well as British, um, Boris Johnson said, that he could, uh, uh, you know, do business with uh, this uh, Taliban government. 
so it is since it is not just an insurgency group but has become a government now they have probably assume greater responsibility and therefore uh, the expectation is that even though they are a fundamentalist and uh, anti modern government the middle east middle medieval type, type of government which will be ruling the country within sharia law and there are several indications that uh, things will be like in the old days because women are not being allowed freedom they have announced that uh, uh, they can go to educational institutions provided they are segregated the institutions themselves should be segregated if that's not possible at least at least uh, men and women should be segregated in the in the classrooms but even more uh, disturbing is that there are there are not news coming from provinces etc where women has been women have been dealt with very cruelly and uh, there have been deaths of women who defied the law so uh, it's a different uh, situation that we had expected and uh, there is a seri serious possibility of a civil war even though taliban has put down the this insurrection in uh, panjshir valley but there were some demonstrations on the on the streets demonstrations and uh, though it was immediately repressed uh, but it it took place for some time it continued uh, because uh, nobody is interested in uh, pakistan taking over afghanistan so the nationalist tendencies were also there but it did not continue so the differences remain and there is a very good uh, possibility of a civil war with the involvement of al qaeda and uh, uh, very uh, many other you know terrorist groups which are there isis etc so uh, the hope and expectation is that uh, these since these are all diverse people you know when you have a revolution uh, you are just operating on your own causing as much destruction as possible but if they have to be a functioning government they need to have some kind of a common program so whether the hakani network will accommodate the other ideas and let it be a composite government with a minimum program and minimum program is something which is not uh, not sure but um, people like baradar and others hopefully will try to bring about some kind of uh, um a, a, a proper agenda a common agenda for the for the government but the fact is that Pali, taliban has maintained the pakistan has maintained taliban and um, therefore it is quite possible that this anti pakistan sentiments might be controlled and uh, it may not uh, come out again even though it is true that uh, there were demonstrations and uh, taliban had to shoot in the air in order to disperse the crowd so whether they are willing to uh, sacrifice nationalism in order to make adjustment is the question so uh, a serious setback is of course for the us we have discussed it before um, but um, the united states has not expressed great concern over this because they had signed an agreement with uh, taliban earlier even though that agreement is not in force so the united states is uh, pretending that this was a minor thing and um, things will uh, uh, get uh, get better uh, so whether the so the united states is hoping that they will be able to have a workable arrangement so there is no question of immediate recognition of uh, by the united states so as long as it doesn't hurt united states interests uh, they would be united states will be working with them that is the signals that uh, we are getting and um, uh, if it is just a, a jihad group uh, without cre creating uh, terrorist incidents from their territory and the managing things without violating human rights so many people are trying to get reconciled to the idea of uh, 
Taliban government and with uh, hopes. But India is the most affected by this, as we have discussed before. Uh, we have had some conversations in Doha with the Taliban, and uh, there have been some you know, promises given that if the Indian embassy continued, uh, they would uh, ensure its protection. But we did not take up the offer and we moved the embassy out. So we are dealing with uh, this situation with characteristic uh, uh, caution. Uh, so if we had started a premature dialogue with uh, uh, Taliban, that would have given a wrong signal to the previous Afghan government. That was one of the reasons why India did not uh, appear, did not want to appear to be defecting from the uh, Ghani government. So India is really the most uh, disadvantaged, also because of the possibility of what is called the China-Pakistan uh, Taliban linkage. So we are continuing to wait and watch. We have expressed concern over the lack of change in the approach. So India um, has been given some assurances, uh, but um, we would certainly not uh, uh, take any action at the moment. Uh, but there is going to be, in fact, today, a conference of uh, uh, countries who are interested in providing um, humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan. So probably we'll participate in a modest way, but uh, we may not certainly uh, go for a, a huge humanitarian program, uh, which might amount to recognition. And so it will, we'll probably, as a gesture, give some humanitarian assistance, but not a fully political uh, engagement like we had before, the investments that we had made. Maybe those investments might be wasted, uh, but still our priority is to make sure that the right message goes to um, the Taliban uh, government. So we, we really do not need anything from them uh, as long as uh, they do not uh, encourage terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir, and they do not wage terrorist wars against any other country in the region. Uh, we can relax and watch, and um, we do not have an immediate requirement for us to do some business with them. So we are sitting back and uh, waiting for the right uh, messages. Of course, the United States uh, has been a big setback for Biden, but as I explained in an article which I wrote for the Hindu, so this setback cannot be uh, permanent because the United States is still the world's largest uh, power, military power, economic power, etc. So uh, this, and also the reason why the United States people generally were in favor of U.S. withdrawal. Only the withdrawal was happened. Uh, haphazardly handled. And that is the only complaint that people have. And therefore, um, President Biden will be able to continue the rest of his term without being seriously affected by uh, the, uh, the present uh, uh, setback. Of course, China's role would be the major factor as far well as the United States is concerned. So United States uh, has, has, would like to ensure that the Chinese influence that not become too overwhelming in Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, and the region as a whole. And there, India is their best bet to control that. So even though we are not exactly following the US steps in, with regard to the Taliban government, uh, we are in tune because of the common issue of China. So we would still be consulting. The Prime Minister is going to Washington for the Quad meeting. He is going to address the um, UN General Assembly. He already spoke to the BRICS leaders. We discussed BRICS. And the outcome of the BRICS meeting was not bad about Afghanistan, because um, the, all the BRICS leaders, including China and Russia, made some statements you know, against uh, any terrorist activities, et cetera. So those five countries were able to come to some kind of a common ground, uh, which looks encouraging. 
but china is keeping its uh, cards close to your chest and they are really trying to uh, look around and see how they can exploit the situation uh, basically by uh, uh, working with pakistan rather than directly so after the uh, washington visit uh, perhaps there will be greater uh, clarity as far as the attitude of uh, many of the major countries um, is concerned so uh, at the moment we have no office in um, in the kabul and we are trying to quietly um, bring back all those people who want to bring back including uh, afghan friends who want to go uh, visas and are willing to come back to india so that proce process is going on quietly without much noise and uh, we will wait and see what kind of uh, policies the taliban government will uh, adopt at the moment there is no hope of it becoming a modern government uh, but uh, you cannot imagine the kind of pressures that will come on them uh, because of the 20 years as a new generation of afghans whose aspirations are different who will need uh, liberty and freedom so immediately after the takeover by taliban they may not express those things publicly uh, but it must be and also the women's issues are very very significant so if they have to continue uh, without any external interference and try and manage whatever system they want to do they need to give some positive signals to their own people and also to the rest of the world so the so far the signals are not helpful and uh, the pakistani domination is really the big question mark for us in what kind of way will they try to use their influence in afghanistan and jammu and kashmir so otherwise the signals are very clear what they want is a, a traditional uh, islamic sharia government and as long as they remain within their internal sphere and do not export revolution to other countries the concern may be a little less but it is too early to say what the consequences will be what mode they will be in because they are quite aggressive in uh, in uh, you know putting out any kind of rebellion that they are very particular but in their words at least they are a little more reasonable and um, so that is all that uh, we can we can say at the moment we hope that this will be a transient situation and things may improve uh, but otherwise we will have to find some way of coexistence with uh, uh, pakistan and afghanistan in a, in a new form thank you very much